I have a problem to accept this because I think about children yes. uh, that have parents, they do hurtful things, so the people that are starving, is that because they have a, a problem with their soul from another life or no. a collective? And, and how can that be fair and loving in that case? Good question. Very good question. So, so here we have a group of adults, right? And it might be a mum and dad. And then we have a little tiny child, right? And this poor little child is having a lot of things happen to it that it does not deserve. I agree. So when I say the law of attraction is perfectly loving, though, in every situation, if these parents were loving and made loving choices, they would see the damage they're doing to their own child, would they not? And they'd want to improve that, wouldn't they? Right? So, so when the child has a sickness, for example, the parents would go, okay, what am I doing to create my child's sickness? There's got to be something I'm doing that's causing my child... Because the, the child doesn't have a fully developed sense of its own will, does it, at, that, at a young age. And if, that, if that's the case, then it has to be the parent's will that's being forced upon the child if the child's getting sick. So the parents would automatically start looking and going, okay... There's something going on inside of me here. And to be honest, if I can't love a child, am I really going to be able to love anyone? If you think about it, a child, a child has no self-determination. They have an inability to protect themselves. They have no personal security that they're able to maintain themselves. They can't fight anybody because everyone's bigger than they are. Many of them at a, very, at a baby age, they can't even feed themselves, clothe themselves and, and care for their body in such a way to keep it clean. So they need somebody else doing it, do they not? Now, if we as a society and as parents see the pain in this child and yet think it's something that's happening in the child, we've got a problem. So the law of attraction here is telling us that actually we are the problem when these events happen. So you know the 50 million children that die of starvation every year on the planet? That should be telling us all something. But, it, but it's not, because there's still 50 million that died last year, and we didn't change it. Right? And they died of malnutrition. We didn't change it. So it's not telling us enough, obviously. Right? There are over 300 million abortions every year. Right? And they're all children, they're all live children, of course. So that's telling me something. That's telling me that we do not love children as much as we think we do. Uh, otherwise, none of these events could be occurring in a developed, loving society. They wouldn't be occurring. Right? So, so when I see a child being harmed, in any way, the first question I ask myself is, how have I contributed to their harm? Because they are unable to protect themselves. They are unable to act themselves. So it has to be the people who are acting towards them that are causing their harm. And I'm one of those persons who's living on this earth, so I need to question how I've contributed to their harm. So when I see 50 million children die every year of starvation, I've got to look at how I contributed to their harm. If I was in a loving society, we would all do that. Can you see that? We often don't. Because we go, oh, that's happening in Africa. Or that's happening in Ethiopia. It's not in my country or whatever. And that tells me that I don't yet love the children enough to understand what the law of attraction is showing me. The law of attraction is showing me something. The law of attraction is demonstrating to me that I don't love children enough yet. Because if I did, I wouldn't be sitting back idly in my personal life allowing this malnutrition and starvation to go on. Now then we go, well, what can we do to improve it? Well, there's literally hundreds of things you can do just living right here that would improve their situation. One would be to give up eating meat. That would greatly improve their situation. Because the reality is it takes 10 times more resources of this planet to provide the same amount of meat as it does to make, provide the same amount of vegetables. 
So that means that I'm using 10 times more resources than those children are. Now, to me, I would go, okay, if I really loved, would I continue to choose to do that? You see, these are all personal questions that we need to ask ourselves. The law of attraction is perfect in that it brings me the event. The event in this case is the harm of the child. And I'm now conscious of the event. So therefore I was involved in the law of attraction that brought this event because I'm conscious of it happening. Now that I'm conscious of it happening, I need to do something with my life. If I'm truly sincere, I would exercise my will to do as much as I possibly can given my circumstances to actually undo this damage. And that means I'll need to make some soul changes. Yeah. You want to say some more? I just, you but, oh, <laughs> thank you. I agree with that. That's yep. a nice answer. But it still it doesn't answer uh, about the condition of the child's soul. Well, let me point out that whenever a parents become pregnant, and as soon as at the time of conception, this child is now absorbing the parent's emotions. Does that make sense? Because of that, it's now absorbing the parent's beliefs. It's absorbing the parent's feelings. It's absorbing. It, this child is highly likely to grow up to be very, very similar in a lot of ways and a lot of belief systems to these parents as a result. So the child already has a group of emotions in it that are attracting these events. Does that make sense? But it's not the child's fault. And what you're getting, I feel, confused with is who's responsible and who's not. Right? Obviously, people who are adults, who are able to exercise their free will, are far more responsible for what is happening than a person who is a child and who is unable to exercise its will because it's being controlled by its environment. So from God's perspective... The law is acting primarily upon the parents and it acts upon everyone, of course, without discrimination. But, but the parents are the ones who can be conscious of it and therefore the parents are the ones who need to change. And yet it's interesting, I find when I have these discussions with parents, parents are very resistive to changing, very resistive. And it's interesting, they're very, they often talk about the harm that's done to children in other locations and yet, many times the parents are doing just as much harm to their own children right at that moment and yet don't want to know about it. And in fact, we had a parenting um, seminar once. It was a two-day parenting seminar. And the children came up and talked with me uh, in front of their parents about how they felt about their parents and what their parents were doing and all sorts of things like that, which was very confronting, <laughs> as you can imagine, to the parents. And yet even with all of that, the parents were really angry and upset about the children doing it. Instead of just looking at, this is how my child feels, wow, like there's something I'm creating here. Yeah. So, Mary? I just wanted to maybe clarify or comment about what you're saying there. This has been a big question for me for a lot, like for a, I had to emotionally resolve this question myself. Yes. And um, I think a few things resolved it for me. Uh, one was when bad things happen, um, we want to blame God <laughs> and say God's punishing us rather than viewing the law of attraction as a law that helps us learn love, basically. Yes. Um, so when something bad happens we see it as punishment and we, we don't see it as an opportunity to learn about love but also this second thing about children when when someone's would you agree that when someone's learning about they have less um they have less impact impact on the law of attraction or the law of attraction is going to operate on things that they're unconscious of at that time because they're still learning who they are and about their own will. Yep. As they grow, as we all grow into adulthood, yep. then we know about our own will and we also, oh well, I don't know. I this is I, my question. Yeah, my, my feelings are that most adults on the planet do not know anything about their own will. They've got no idea how their will and their choices affect everybody else around them, how they're affecting themselves 
and all of those kind of things. So my feelings are that, for a start, most people on the planet have no idea how to access their own will. In a lot of ways, most people on the planet are like children in adult bodies. And in fact, if you look at the many emotions that people have in certain pressure at events, they act like children in adult bodies. Yeah. And, and that's an indication they have no idea how to express their will in a loving manner. Secondly, uh, but I do feel there are some questions about blame and responsibility that we need to address here. And, and we need to address them quite clearly. Yeah. So, so and, uh, sorry, just on. one other thing, if we could address when other people have control over our will, I suppose. Yeah, that's well, that's about responsibility. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 